Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market with this week's episode of the Rogue Roundup number 17, where we give our picks on Legacy, Commander, Standard, Modern, and now Oathbreaker for cards that I think are going to go up. Starting off this week, we are going to head over to Modern, and I've picked Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch is a pick for two reasons. One, Ultimate Masters is about ready to start going up in value, and this is the highest demand card from Ultimate Masters. It actually is going to be the number one card played in Modern again with Infect on the rise. Scale Up really made Infect back into a tier one deck, which consistently is able to turn two and turn three. And with how fast the format is in Modern currently, you need to be able to do turn twos and turn threes to deal with the combos or the graveyard based decks. So with Infect on the rise, I think the Noble Hierarch is going to follow suit. Right now you can get in on around the $35 is where I target these and the current price is $42. This card also sees a ton of play in other decks like Modern Humans or a lot of the creature based combo decks in Modern. So I think the Ultimate Masters is about done with the supply and it's going to start going up and again this is the most demanded card in my opinion from the modern horizons or excuse me from the ultimate masters and this is going to have a lot more demand even though it has a rare i think it has the best chance of going up in value moving on to standard i've picked mass manipulation because mass manipulation has spawned its own archetype with simic manipulation and bant reclamation decks running a total of four of these in their decks so simic manipulation is all about ramping into mass manipulation this is a double x spell and and quadruple blue to gain control of x target creatures and planeswalkers but if you're able to ramp this card out and with how many planeswalkers being played right now in the meta with esper planeswalkers and jeskai planeswalkers being a huge share of the meta and many other decks just running either efficient creatures that this is going to give you good value or even running a few planeswalkers scattered throughout the mix like even mono red running planeswalkers now with chandra this is a very very powerful card with taking your opponent's planeswalkers and creatures and using them against them so currently the buy list has been increased from card kingdom to about 60 cents so this means we have to be very aggressive to get in on mass manipulation and that's why i've given a target price of 75 cents the current tc market price is about 75 cents as well so i expect this card to be rising soon i don't see this card losing favor post rotation as a lot of the cards that are seeing play right now in standard are from war of the spark or from guilds of ravnica or ravnica legions and so with cards rotating out we're going to see a very similar meta post rotation so now is the time to get on mass manipulation this was from ravnica allegiance that is about done with the supply and now i think is the time to get in on this particular card i expect a double up or a triple up this should be about three to four dollars if it continues to see as much play as it does post rotation next up is legacy legacy with modern horizons has actually spawned a brand new deck with echo of eons and Entomb is no longer just a card that's going to go get creatures. You can actually get any card with Entomb. And the combo is you Entomb for Echo of Eons. And then Narset, Parter of the Veils, is able to make your opponents not draw any cards when you flash back the Echo of Eons. So it's a wheel type effect that has flashback that you can get with Entomb. Has a very, very reasonable uh, curve. And there's also a few other combinations in the deck. And this deck has seems to be taking off in Legacy. And with Entomb already seeing a lot of play in Rakdos Reanimator, this is another Ultimate Masters card, rare, that is bottomed out that I think is going to go up in price. The reason why I'm aggressive on this is MTG Saddle has increased their buy list to $4.50, and the TC market price is about 7 bucks. So I think the target price needs to be about $5, and I'm expecting this card to have a steady growth with throughout the next few months. Cards like Entomb are just begging to bust Echo of Eons, and Entomb is my pick for Legacy this week. Next up, we have Oathbreaker. I'm going to be doing a primer for my Rogue Deck Builder channel about Elf Ball. And there is a hidden gem in Elf Ball for Oathbreaker that's actually banned in Commander. And this is Rofellos Lanawar Emissary. A lot of casual players or Commander players aren't really familiar with this card because it has been banned in Commander. So it doesn't show up in any Elf Ball list for Commander. However, in Oathbreaker, this is a very powerful card to generate a ton of mana. It adds one green mana to your mana pool for each forest you control. And so if you're running just an all forest deck, which typically a lot of Oathbreaker decks are running, this can generate a lot of mana. This is also a reserve list card, so it has everything going for it. Urza's Legacy is actually one of the sets that has a very low supply comparatively to other reserve list sets. And a card with the power level of Rofellos that occasionally sees play in Legacy and other formats, I think is just destined to go up. So I'd try to get in on it 
$15. Currently, the best buy list is only $11, but I think this is an aggressive card to get in on if you believe that Oathbreaker is going to be a legitimate format. The current market price is about $19. You can actually get some other retail prices for about $17 if you go to Miniature Market or eBay or, or Amazon. However, the growth rate of this is flat, but I'm expecting this to spike up in value. I am very bullish on Oathbreaker. That's why I've replaced Popper with Oathbreaker in this Rogue Roundup. And Rofellos is probably the best pick, especially the reserve list tag on top of that. I'm expecting this card to just go crazy within the next few months. That leaves us this week with Commander, and I have picked Jeskai Ascendancy. Now, disclaimer alert, when I actually did the infographs for this particular Rogue Market episode... I had Jeskai Ascendancy at a dollar. You cannot get in on, on Jeskai Ascendancy for a dollar. I think it's it's spiked up in value. I think Card Kingdom has also increased their buy list up to about a dollar, so that 38 cent buy list is not accurate right now. And it, this is basically my fault. I guess it pays to be a patron could, because one of the things that I do over at my Patreon for the Rogue Market slash the Rogue Deck Builder is I release this video or at least these infographs 24 hours early. So now with having as many patrons I have or as many people that have on my Discord, it tends to have its own little self-fulfilling prophecy with people investing in these cards before Rogue Roundup episodes come out. However, I still think this is a great spec regardless of the dollar price, a dollar plus price for the Jeskai Ascendancy. So we're having Kaikar come out in Core 2020, which the Command Zone actually spent about 15 minutes talking about Jeskai Ascendancy in their deck tech for Kaikar or their spoiler video for Kaikar. And so I'm thinking all the casuals are going to be picking this card up. This is also a card that occasionally sees play in Modern, and it did get hurt by the banning of a Gitaxian Pro, but it's only a few spells from being broken again or being able to be a consistent turn three or turn four deck in Modern. And I'm expecting uh, sometime in the future that this is going to be the case. In fact, it wasn't too long ago that a, a deck was able to 5 0 with Jeskai Ascendancy in Modern. So the deck is still legit. Uh, it's just really competing with other decks in that sort of archetype for uh, non-interactive combo-based decks. However, with Kaikar coming out, this card is going to go nuts, especially since this was the most focused card that the Command Zone talked about. So if you can still get in at the $1.50 mark, I wouldn't fault you. I think this is going to be a $3 to $5 card when the dust settles, with Kaikar being the most most uh, popular card coming out of Core 2020 for the Commander format. I hope you enjoyed this list of cards from this week's episode of the Rogue Roundup. Be sure to check back next week, or if you're a fan of this type of financial content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. What are your five cards you're going to be investing in? Be sure to check out my other channel over at RogueDeckBuilder.com for our weekly Market Monday episode. Thanks for watching. <laughs>